What's going on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 116 of Behind the Tool Belt with TC Backer Construction. Audio Vic. There we go. There TC Backer family. Episode 116. Boy, it is beautiful in Pennsylvania today, man. It, it is. is a beautiful Pennsylvania spring day. Um, perfect roofing weather, man. The guys were all out getting it today. We got a banging episode for you guys today, man. We got Mr. High Energy Mike the Hammer Martinez here. Um, he is the director of Sky Diamond University. Um, he's got an awesome story to share with you guys. Um, so let's dive right into this, man. Welcome, man. Welcome. What's up, going? What's up, guys? I appreciate you having me. I'm glad you're having nice weather in Pennsylvania. But if I look out my window, it's sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. Nice. <laughs> I think we got you beat, but I think you got some better, uh, oh. a better market for storms, and you guys are probably killing it out there. So, no, yeah, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to uh, be part of uh, the podcast, and let's make let's make it happen, man. Yeah, yes. man, love yes. it, love it. We appreciate you, uh, you know, accepting the invite. Uh, I know I've been following you for a long time, man, back probably two, three years ago. Um, we love what you do. We love what you stand for in our industry. We love the changes that you're trying to make. We love the influence that you got. And I couldn't wait to get you on our podcast tonight, man. So, so tell us, tell us, go back to the beginning, man. And, and how did, how did the roofing space find you? Let's start there. Wow. So that's, that's, that's a, that's a long, long story, but let, let, let's do it, man. So, so uh, my background, um, like I said before, um, when I was in the podcast, we'll leave my background since I started with 18, um, I started in call centers. So sales has always kind of been in my forte. Um, I've owned a lot of different companies from merchant services, SEO, home-based business opportunities, a lot of different stuff. Um, long story short, um, I ended up um, you know, get, getting into some trouble. Um, you know, I was one of those kids that was an entrepreneur at heart. I ended up, and I'll just tell you this, I never said this before, uh, but I was kind of tied into the Sammy to, Sammy to Bull Gravano deal uh, with the John Gotti deal, and I ended up uh, doing some time, and I came out, um, and, and a lot of people don't know that, but let's, let's keep it 100, and so right. I came out. I spent three years in jail and went through some of the hardest times of my life, um, you know, I, I basically, I think it was from 22 to 25, I came out and a mentor of mine, um, who I'll mention him again, his name's Peter Moles. He's one of the baddest and best guys in the merchant service game, uh, in Oak Brook, Illinois. Um, you know, being a kid that just got out of jail, um, you know, I was riding the bus, um, from like the worst neighborhoods in, in Chicago. And I had a little shirt and tie on, and I got blessed with a good job out of work release. And Peter Moles, uh, you know, wanted more for me, and he handed me the book, Thinking Real Rich by Napoleon Hill. Long story short, when you're driving on a city bus for two hours, you know, you have nothing else to do, either listen to the bus driver or the, all, the, all the negative, you know, stuff, um, or, or, or make a choice and make a decision. And so I started reading that book. 
and I read that book over and over and I believed it and it was a magical thing for me because what up ended up happening is I had not, nothing to gain, nothing to lose. And next thing you know, I became one of the best merchant service guys in the entire nation. And, you know, we'd be in Peter's office and he'd play the Rocky song and I'd come out and stand on top of a chair and I'd tell the guys, come get it, you know. And, and so that's kind of where my journey started, but a lot of other things in between then. Um, since then, like I said, I've owned a lot of my own companies. Um, I owned, um, I owned a SEO company and this is more than I told most people too. And I actually, um, blew it up. I blew it out of the water. No, there was a company called big fish local, uh, in California. They were huge, huge SEO company. And they did a press one campaign, press one now to update your Google listing for 2019 or wherever, whatever it was. I don't remember, but long story short. Um, I took all the money I made, I went there and I learned press ones and I took it back to Arizona and I opened up a company. We had 45 reps. We were doing press one for up to update your Google listing for Google listings. I built it up to almost $250,000 a month reoccurring billing. Uh, my payroll was $40,000 a week. <laughs> and all of a sudden I get a phone call from first dad and they're like, Hey man, uh, do you do hosting? Do you do websites? I'm like, yeah, I do everything. You know, we do all this stuff. And next thing you know, this snotty kid, I don't know who he was, hit a button and I'm on the blacklist. So now I'm sitting there with $250,000 a month, nothing to process. Okay. I can't process these credit cards. I'm on the blacklist. I'm like, what am I going to do? I got really weak. I got scared. I said, you know what? I'm done with the business. I'm selling everything. I closed down shop. I ended up running into another guy in uh, Tempe um, who had a solar company. I won't, I'm not going to say any names because last time I did it kind of messed some people up. So we'll just keep it at that. And and I had been going to Rocky Point since I was 18, and that's on the border of Arizona. And I realized that there was opportunity there to open up a call center. Um, and so I convinced him to allow me to open up a call center. I opened up a call center in Mexico. I was killing it. I had 60 reps. We were destroying it in solar. And then next thing you know, I had this bright idea. You know, us entrepreneurs always want to do these next big things. Uh, um, this, this restaurant opened up downstairs. I'll keep this short, guys. But this restaurant opened up downstairs. Long story short, I put all my energy in the restaurant, took my hand off the wheel of the call center, and built a Coyote Ugly, you know, like from the movie, downstairs. It was called Coyote Fail. <laughs> and and I did the wrong thing. Let's just put it like that. The, the, the nighttime creatures would we'll just say the cartel guys don't really like when the guys open up bars. And they, I was good with the call center, so I'm giving everyone jobs. But when you open up the liquor board and all that stuff, you probably shouldn't have been done. Mm -hmm. So I learned my lesson. I came back from Mexico with nothing. Anthony and I have a lot of history. Um, we've known each other. Well, actually, I met Autumn first. I met her 15 years ago. She's the vice president of Storm Ventures Group. Um, she introduced me to Anthony. She was basically running and gunning for him. There was a storm that hit in Arizona. I think you guys remember, but Anthony, was, basically I met him then almost 15 years ago. So we've always had a relationship. I've never really been in his business, but I've been good at sales and I've been number one in every company I ever worked for. So I was like, let's go, let's do it. And so I went and worked for Anthony threw everything in the, in, in the hat. Um, I basically literally became a closer within three days um, and became number one or almost number one. I won't tell Adam that, but long story short, I destroyed it. And, and, and we rock and rolled for a while, and, and it got out that, you know, I learned as much as I could from Anthony, and I had a buddy from Chicago who had another friend that was a team lead. I'm not going to say his name this time because I got too many phone calls, but he was a team lead for CMR. And I went out there, and this is what I want to tell guys, you know, I went out there with all these big hopes and dreams. I got told I was going to make $20,000, $10,000 a job. And who doesn't want to do that, right? Like right. I'm moving into Lely Golf Course Resort. I'm going out there. I'm building this guy's team. I take his team from the worst team, the number one in six months, 294 tile deals. Steve will verify. Josie will verify. And, and then what happened was, it was the wrong energy, I guess you'd say, and I was too green to know what was really happening. But I necessarily wasn't hired by CMR. I was hired by a team lead. So he had control of all the deals. Mm -hmm. And him and I kind of had an argument or whatever. I'll just put it like that. I'm not going to get into details about it. Um, and long story short, I got kicked out. I got thrown out on the street. 
Um, and now I'm, I don't have a truck because the truck was included. I was in the lately house. I got thrown out of there. And so I'm like, what am I doing now, dude? But, you know, I'm a fighter. I'm a get back up or I'm going to keep coming at you. If I can crawl out of Mexico, I can crawl out of lately in Naples. That's yeah. what I'll tell you right now. That's Absolutely. a fact. So, so next thing you know, I'm in the hotels. I'm blowing through all my cash. Um, COVID hits. COVID hits. And... You know, it was scary. I think it was scary for everybody, right? Like, you know, they're all of a sudden they're like, you gotta go to the grocery store, buy toilet paper, this, that, and the other. I'm like, what's going on here? I'm like, dude, we need to take this serious. And so we, we you know, COVID started getting crazy. Um, my family's back in Arizona. I have a beautiful five year old. Uh, we call him Little Hammer. He's the, my my love, my my blood and soul. But the long story short, he was a, he was a baby, and I was worried. Um, at the same time, I can't sit still, so I said, you know what? I take the loss, the 294 deals, figure this out later. It's COVID. I'm going back to Arizona with nothing, maybe a couple bucks in my pocket. So I go back to Arizona. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and this key in mind, guys, I built the team um, to from the, from from the worst to number one, utilizing what I learned from SVG. So I want to give Anthony credit for that, okay? Because it does work. And if you put the energy into it, it will teach the, the A to Z, um, but the beginning stages. And if I can do it, many can. But you know, I'll always be grateful for Anthony for that for that deal because, I mean, realize, who am I? I'm just a kid that doesn't know nothing, mm -hmm. good at sales. I watch all of Anthony's videos. I live, breathe, and eat it like I'm doing what Lee hates right now, which, by the way, is amazing. And all of a sudden, now I'm this roofing professional, right, and lately. But really, I didn't know much, and I didn't understand what happened. And so long story short, I come back, I get a phone call from my buddy, who's the guy I'm actually bringing with me um, to Sky Diamonds because he's a monster too. He says, hey, man, come to Charlotte. Tornadoes hit. You know, we're going to rock and roll here. We're essential. So I'm like, you know what? I'm sitting here doing nothing. Let's go. <laughs> cruise out to Charlotte. He gets me an apartment, puts me in a truck. Next thing you know, him and I are cruising neighborhoods, uh, Indian Trail, Union Trail. We're knocking doors, and I'm huge at the time. I'm bigger than I am now because obviously I had an injury. But we're knocking doors. We're pounding on doors. People are either answering or they're not. But here's the thing. If they're answering, I'm saying, hey, sorry, we know it's COVID, but it's social distancing. But by the way, there was a tornado. Might as well, while you're waiting in your house, get a new roof. Long story short, him and I, did 143 deals, uh, probably I think in four months, the most money I've ever made. Uh, in, in, well, not the most money I've ever made, but a lot of money during that time um, because State Farm was literally too afraid to do things. They were in the truck <laughs> signing $18,000, $20,000 checks and handing them right over to us. Mm -hmm. It was the best market I ever worked. But the unfortunate thing was, you couldn't be on the roads after seven. So Charlotte was absolutely horrible for me. It wasn't my type of deal. I'm from Chicago. I'm from Arizona. I like to have fun. There was nothing going on in Charlotte. It was like you couldn't meet a friend. I was like, can I be a friend? I want a friend. Like, And so Sean was miserable. I was miserable. We were making all this money. I was like, you know what? I got a phone call. I'm not going to say his name because I actually talked to him the other day. So I'm going to fix it right now, Brandon. But I got a phone call from a guy in the Houston, Texas, Woodlands Roofing. Uh, you know, Brandon Marshall, good one of my good friends. He'll be my friend for life. You know, and all these experiences add up to what you are today, guys. So I'm not upset at all. All of these I consider as war wounds or scars mm -hmm. to build me up to what I need to be or evolve to who I need to become. And that's what I'm doing. But long story short, go out to go out to Houston, rock and roll with his team, start to build it from scratch. Everything's going good. He's got me in a place in the waterway. He took good care of me. And all of a sudden, the hurricane hits. Mm -hmm. Now we go from living at the wood, from the woodlands in, in a nice waterway, you know, working a couple hours a day or whatever, doing the normal deal, to now I'm in a trailer with, you know, 10 guys that never been in the business. And I'm outside the trailer park, and Lee was actually there too, but I'm outside the trailer park training these guys, you know, quite a statement, statement, question, closed, rhetorical questions, going over rebuttals, and everyone's like excited. So we're all pumped up in the trailer park. We go out, and this is where I'm going to plug my boy Jacob, Jacob Treeguard. If you don't know him, look him up. He's a badass. He's one of the biggest guys. And that's kind of how we connected. I didn't mean to swear, but, you know, him and I's energy was just like, bam. So my guys drop into the neighborhood. 
neighborhood. You know, when you hit a hurricane like that, there's no selling roofs. Okay, you're you're pulling people out of houses. You're 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 you're, you're tarping roofs. You're sliding off roofs. You know, pulling trees. And Jacob's a tree guy. And so we land in this really really nice neighborhood with all these slate roofs. And you know, Jacob's like, "Wow, man, you're huge." And I'm like, "I'm huge. You're huge too." And like, let's roll we're rolling together. So next thing you know. You know, the first thing that happens in a storm is the tree guy. So Jacob's like, man, you're a roofing guy. I need you. I'm like, yeah, I need you too. We can't brothers right away. I mean, when you see the guy, you understand. He's just the biggest guy, you know, military guy, one of my one of my really, really good friends now. Um, you know, and you, you'll, you'll be seeing and hearing from him a lot. So we're going to do things together. But long story short, so next thing you know, I'm going with Jacob. I'm behind him. He's pulling out the trees. I'm signing the contracts on the roofs, and all my guys are getting phone calls. Trees are coming out. Signing roofs. Boom, boom, boom. So we end up writing, and and this isn't, you know, this is that no fault to nobody. Let's just put it like that. I'll clear this up, Brandon. But when you have a guy like me who's a powerhouse that comes in and puts all those deals, you really need to make sure that you have a company can support it. So if guys out there are watching in and, and you drop into a hurricane, do your research on the companies. Make sure they're solid, and I can help you with that if you ever need me. You know, I'm available to consult with you. But, you know, I place a lot of guys with a lot of good companies now because you don't want to drop into a storm. You guys probably know. And then you put all these deals, and you make all these relationships. And then it takes a long time because I talked to Brandon. He's like, I did do builds. It was after you left. But long story short, it took so long to do the builds, my sales guys lost faith in me. And so it was my relationships and my responsibility, not not theirs necessarily. But, you know, we talked the other night. He called me. He's like, hey, man, you know, we did do the builds and we had a long talk. So, so he did do the builds, but sometimes it takes a long time. And so you don't want to, you want to be careful when you're writing because the homeowners want their houses fixed now. Like, especially these slate tile guys, yeah. these tile guys, they called us out, like, I think for one house five times to retile it, but it was one of the biggest houses in Lake Charles and one of the most prominent guys. So, dude, we went out there all five times. We're paying the roof boys all these times to, to retile the roof. So I know there's a lot of costs involved, but that was kind of what happened. And then during that time, uh, and, and thanks again, Anthony, um, he was having, you know, Anthony does special, something special. You know, with, with the network, you know, he brings guys together. He calls it mobilizing the clans, if you will. And those events in Lake Charles are special. You know, when there's a hurricane there and all the guys are there missing their families, missing their friends, and everyone gets together and they go eat those steak dinners or they get a break for a minute. You know, relationships happen, right? Mm -hmm. Network happens, you know, new, new, new friendships are made. And I made some great friends and some great relationships. And Anthony's introduced me to a ton of people. But long story short, he's like, you know, listen, maybe this guy you know can't handle you whatever um you know you're gonna do all these jobs you, you're gonna end up like you did in cmr so let me let me set you up with another guy <laughs> so long story short uh he sets me up with another guy not gonna say his name but that's where the pensacola thing came in dropped into pensacola with all my faith and heart got a little house started out with two of my guys i brought three of my guys from lake charles we ended up building a team of 25 guys we did almost 300 something deals. Long story short, I don't want to get into that because that's where solar was kind of born. Like I told you, when I dropped into Pensacola, I knew I had no idea how I was going to build a team, but I also knew when a hurricane hits, everybody wants a piece of that, right? Everyone wants to get in on the action. And so I got lucky. I don't know if it was luck or faith. I ended up running into some solar kids and these solar kids were guys from the, that, that area they actually were beach service guys, but they did solar on the side. So if you do a hurricane, there's no beach service no more. You know, they made a ton of money doing beach service. And then they're also not doing solar. So they wanted me to teach them roofs. So I, once again, I brought them into the house. I, I'd hire everybody every Thursday. I'd bring them in, put them in front of the TV, put them in front of Anthony, play the videos, train them. And next thing you know, we go from five guys to 26 guys to almost 30 guys. And we did almost 300 deals wow That's long story crazy. short <laughs> right. right damn Catch dude i love your energy yeah. man Catch no builds no builds no builds got until the very end i'm not going to say this guy's names i want to i don't want to put people out there because listen and anyone that's watching i want you to understand this god's not going to put you through anything you can't handle okay because during those times also i didn't want to include this but my mom passed away from covid 
My dad passed away two weeks after that. And I was just didn't want to go back to deal with it. And so I just kept my head down and kept working and kept pushing. Okay. But the, the long story short is anything that you go through can only make you stronger or better. And that pain is what's going to evolve you and make you become who you're going to become. And I guess I didn't have enough pain yet. So, yeah. so I ended up talking to Anthony and like, this isn't working out. We, we ended up connecting. He's like, listen, man, it's the holidays. You know, we're about to blow up New Orleans. You're the best at what you do. And he will verify that you will, Anthony. Um, but you know, he asked me to come back and help him build the conference. So I'm like, okay, cool. I get to see my family for the holidays. I've been gone forever. You know, my son misses me. Let's go home for Christmas. So we go home. I step into the arena and, and, and uh, you know, we're rock and rolling as Storm Ventures Group has their stuff together, you know, and we, 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 we did it. My brother-in-law is the promoter, Leslie Gentry, Gentry Entertainment. My sister was a sweetheart. So we're the ones that he's the one that brought Floyd Mayweather, you know, and we bring all the entertainment to all the Win the Storm events. But, you know, Anthony and I kind of synergized, and during the conference, it goes fast. But we, we threw a pretty good conference, and, and we brought Floyd Mayweather. Uh, it, was, it was good. And, and, and long story short, you know, the conference was my first conference. Um, I'd never done it before. And so, you know, I, I was basically Anthony's right-hand man. And so I had to be better and faster and quicker and, and do everything at the snap of his fingers and not argue, not talk back and be the best soldier I could be, right? That's what you got to do. Yep. And so I did that. And, you know, I was at the conference from morning. And then I, we had the VIP events for that one. So I'm at the morning. I'm at the conference in the morning. All the VIP events. I'm tired. Dude. Mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. We're going on three days now. I am like literally you can push me over, blow me over with a win. You know, like I was tired. So the last day was planned. Um, we were supposed to you know, have a relaxing day and I'll t I'm going to take responsibility for it because, you know, we make our own decisions. And, I, and, and and we were supposed to have a relaxing day and go see Bourbon Street. But, you know, who really goes to Bourbon Street and has a relaxing day? So <laughs> I've never been. I've, I've dreamt say, about New Orleans right. forever, mm -hmm. like since I was in high school. You know, and, and when I was in prison, I'm watching it on TV. Like, these are things you dream about. I've never been to the Bourbon Street or New Orleans, you know. And then you think about how cool it's going to be. So we go to brunch. Long story short, we end up going to the club. I meet the wrong person. I, uh, you know, basically I'm tired. I don't want to go anymore. I'm like, hey, you know, let's go back to my place. It's 7 o'clock. I mean, come on. It's, it's, I'm over it. I'm tired. It's fourth day. Hey, she's like, let me take a picture of your watches. Takes a picture of my watches. Within minutes, you know, or, or an hour or so after a drink and passing out, I don't know what happened there. Knock came to my door. Hey, give me your watch. We know you have money. And I'm like, dude, come get it. I'm, I, you know what? I'm ready to die anyways. Anthony almost killed me with this conference. I, I, I'm, you, I'm dead. Take me. Take me now. And I'm like, shoot me. And the dude shot me. And when he shot me, I couldn't believe it. Like, that was a serious deal. Like, I was like, dude, why'd you shoot me? Like, what's right. going on? You shot me, dude. And I'm thinking like, and, and there was no, I didn't see the blood because I was twisted, but the pain was there, you know? And so I, I tried to move my leg. It wasn't connected. And then I knew I was in trouble. So I pounded on the walls and nobody came. And they're like, no, no, we're not coming out. He's got to go. And I'm like, I'm dying. So it took like 20 minutes. Finally, they come up. They rush me in the ambulance to the hospital, which was the worst hospital I've ever been to in my life. It was like being back in jail with giant nurses that were just mean and trying to drug <laughs> me the whole time and fill me up and, and yell at me and scream at me. And so I was like, help me, Anthony. Like, so man, Anthony I just got in. shot. What are you yelling at My sister <laughs> comes in. You know, I'm not a criminal, but everybody that goes to this hospital, you know. Yeah, that's criminal. what they all say. Right? Know, I just threw the, <laughs> you know, I just threw the biggest conference in New Orleans since goddamn COVID. Right. And we were with Floyd Mayweather and, and, and opened up New Orleans. Anthony made a phone call. I'm going to tell you again. Uh, T.W. Mock, Tad Recovery Services. Want to give him a shout out? Within a, without without even question, he uh, he said, "Listen, I'm going to do this. I want to do it for Mike." He flew in his private jet. Long story short, after a lot of pain, thanks Christy for being there for me. Um, Tad Tad flew me home in the private jet, and I'm resting and for two weeks. And Anthony's knocking at my door, and he's like, "Hey, I need you back in the office." Mm -hmm. I'm, like, Dude, I'm not ready yet. He's like, I need you back in the office. So now I'm in a wheelchair, flying around store, store ventures group, screaming at people, doing the same thing I've done. And we we had a good year. We had a great year. We had, we uh, we we I think that we um, 
did some amazing revenue. We, we threw the biggest and best conference I think we ever had in, in, in Dallas. We blew the roof off the place. So we, you know, we made some mistakes. Let, let's face it, you know, with the Super Bowl thing. And, you know, that wasn't our fault. There was just this mean old lady that was, hit, you know, ruining everything. But, you know, when you have an event like that, especially during COVID, and you put it together so fast, there's going to be problems, right? Mm-hmm. So part of this event, though, and, and let me backtrack a little bit. My job ultimately was I was to get the big spenders, you know, the $50,000 players, the platinum guys. And um, I ended up, <laughs> sorry, Lee, I ended up uh, running into Donnie Haight and we ended up closing them for 50 grand. And that was Donnie Haight's big, big plan. Kind of. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. So I ended up closing Donnie. We threw the best conference. But while I'm at the conference, and this is where everything ties in, guys, you know, I'm watching Lee in his booth. And I, my job is to connect Anthony and Lee, because part of the deal was I have to get Lee and Anthony to do a podcast. Now, Lee's all for it. Anthony, it's kind of like, come on, Ant, come on, Ant, come on, come with me. Let's go. Let's go get this done. Come on. We need to get this done. You know how it goes. So I finally got in there. I was like, Lee's like, damn, this guy got it done. I was like, yeah, I got it done. So we got the podcast done. But the point is, when I saw the way Lee worked at that conference, and he was at his booth all day long, and I saw his energy and his passion. I knew I would already hit the highest level in SVG. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I couldn't walk for a year, guys. I was in a wheelchair, okay? And then I was in crutches. And that's probably why you saw me. And I hold myself accountable. And I posted pictures every day. And I showed everyone my gratitude posts. And I thank Anthony every day. I think that if you don't thank and believe in your organization, you shouldn't be there. If you don't believe in the owner, you don't believe in the company, then you shouldn't be there. Because if you don't believe in it, why do you think someone's going to believe in you? Yeah. And so that's part of the reason of what I do. It's not about ass kissing or whatever. It's about, listen, here's the deal. This is my guy I work for. This is my leader. This is my mentor. I'm going to be grateful for that. And I'm going to promote his products as if they were my own. And if I believe in the product, it's going to make me easier sell, which Storm Ventures Group and SVG has created a massive, amazing network. But at the end of the day, it's missing a few little things. And those things are, for one, I want to be back in the field. Like, I want to help Lee and grow his team and go to those offices and motivate those guys. I might not be ready to get on a roof yet. I'm sure I will. But, you know, I want to bring that motivation. And I, you know, Lee is also, I got to spend some time with him. He's a master. Let me tell you something. Master. Ninja. Ninja lead generator. He's a master recruiter, okay? And he's got a team of badasses behind him that just all have passion and would live and die for this guy. And I'm not saying people wouldn't live and die for anything because they would, but it's, it's all the energy together. And I've seen with my own eyes Lee when I was with him, and he's literally on the phone all day long while running a $150 million roofing company coaching guys on the coaching calls, 40 guys on the, on the, on the call. And it's, it's legit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, that's awesome. Like I can, I can do that. I can, I can work with that. I can build a brand on that. And so it was a hard decision for me, but Bill Walsh is another big part of that. So let me backtrack a little bit because Bill Walsh uh, with power team international was also a big sponsor. You know, these guys, when I say big sponsors, you're not getting in sponsorship for less than 50 grand. Um, Bill ended up paying almost 65. Lee paid 50, okay? So Bill is a different cat. And he's not on either Sky Diamond side. He's not on the, he's not on the Storm Venture Group side. So he's a neutral person. But at the same time, he is a businessman. And he's been in the game for 25 years, and he trained some of the best of the best in the entire nation. The funny thing is, he actually trained that guy, Peter Moles. He trained him. Isn't that a fucking crazy thing? Small world. He trained Peter Moles. And so that was wild for me. But me and Bill made a connection. And when, what I mean by connection is he held me accountable for every single thing that went wrong at the conference. And I needed to literally jump through hoops of fire and fix it. Or it could have potentially been a chargeback, right? Or, you know, he could have with a, you know, he could have done that, but he didn't. But because I moved so fast and fixed everything. And one of the coolest things about the conference too, that I need to talk about was I decided to take a handful of people to help Bill out. And, and, and I handpicked them. I thought there were special people like Billy DeReamer, um, you know, Jacob Goodry was there. 
Uh, Eric Armstrong signed up. He's part of the Rainmakers now, too, and he's a big name in the industry. What's up, Eric? Um, but, you know, I brought them to this dinner at Folk of Chow, and I didn't know what to expect. You know, I just did it. And I did it out of intuition. And this was a dinner after the conference, uh, after the day of the conference. And it was at Folk of Chow, and I come in, and Bill's all high energy, and he's drinking his tea, and he's all pumped up. I'm like, what's this guy going to do? I've never seen this before. I've never been to this. And he's got his little thing. He's like, buddy, we got this. Don't worry. And so I get up there and I give them the introduction of Bill and why I respect him and, and everything. And long story short, when Bill got up there, listen, they were engaged. Bill spit fire because he's not on the roofing side. He's not on, he doesn't have any alternative motive other than making people's businesses better, right? And so with the things he talked about were techniques that make businesses better, which um, don't cost any money, which is pretty amazing. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 When they teach you something that doesn't cost you money, who wants to teach you that? Like where to find a flyer, how to get a newsletter out to your customer, how to tell them happy birthday, happy anniversary for pennies on the dollar, how to delegate every task in your business, right? So I was blown away. And I'm looking around the table and I brought the guys of growth to success, these young entrepreneurs. They're also a $50,000 sponsorship. I brought Kyle, um, Kyle Dotson. He owns um, Affordable Home Solutions in Maryland. I want to give that kid a shout out. 20, 22-year-old kid, guys. And he's doing 20 million on the way to 30 million. Wow. 26 reps. Damn. Wow. And that shows is real. But I brought him there too. And I saw I brought Josie Parks there. What's up, Jose? But I, you know, I brought all these guys there and I'm watching Bill engage and, and it was awesome, right? And so me and Bill after that made a connection. And that's where kind of I decided to make the shift, the change. Like I want to be like a Bill. Ali and Anthony. I want to mentor guys and help them with my experiences so they don't go through the same thing I did and lead them in the right direction. And I want to take all the good things I've learned and give them the right, the right opportunities so they can make a good educated decision of what they want to do. And so guys have been reaching out to me like, what company should I work for? What's this? What's that? And the guy asked today, and I'm going to be honest, he said, you know, what's better, Sky Diamonds or SPG? I said, listen, they're both good. They're both good. It's like, would you only read Think and Grow Rich or would you read The Secret too? You know, right. every type of learning is good. Mm -hmm. It's what works for you. But the more you learn, the more you do, the better you're going to become. And I think, I don't know if you guys follow me or not on Facebook, but, mm -hmm. you know, when I get involved in something, I'm posting all these videos right now. I pass all his tests, right? Because I believe if you're going to involve yourself in something, you go 100% in or don't go at all. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, that's the thing that makes the difference of what I do and why I'm the hammer is like, I, I go, I don't stop working guys. I work all day long, whether it's on social media, whatever, you know, and, and, and the biggest thing is right now, guys are saying that they can't find guys to work. But then I point out Kyle Dotson with an affordable home improvement. And this kid's 22 years old and doing 30 million. You're doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not finding the right guys. You're not, you're not finding the influencers. You're not building your brand. You know, Lee is a master at teaching them how to do that. Anthony stops at that point because Anthony doesn't have any invested interest in the roofing sale. He has more invested interest in the training platform and what he does in solar, mm -hmm. right? Solar's doing really well for him and, and I'm sure it will do well for everybody. And that's another great thing. I mean, solar changed the industry. Let's face it. Yeah. When you can offer one point four nine percent financing over 25 years okay get a 600 credit score approved and and, and get, get a 26 percent federal tax credit and get a draw on that contract not saying how much i mean it just gives your guys more bullets in the gun when they're at the kitchen table versus not remember if you think three years back they didn't have that opportunity. Now you're selling roofs, and guess what? Those solar Pensacola guys yeah. were knocking on the door after and getting double the commission. So what what happens? What's happening in the industry is amazing. Uh, but what I'm also learning from Lee is the retail game. The retail game is really where it's at. Mm -hmm. You really want to be, in, and this is where a lot of guys are. You want to become a hybrid to where you know retail, you know solar, you know storm, you know everything. 
Right. You know, that's that's the ultimate thing I think that uh, is important right now is to become a hybrid. It is. So if I can give, if I can give anybody advice, learn from everything. Yeah. Learn that's from recession everything. Proof. Yeah, that's that, that's what we've been trying to do. We're, we're, we got our hands in solar, retail. Um, the the one area that we may be the weakest at would be the, the storm restoration area of it. But we've been, you know, new construction, solar, retail, light commercial, a little bit of heavier <clears throat> commercial, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of got our feet in all of it. And like Chris said, it, it's future proof. You have to be a hybrid these days. So I totally, but here's the thing. I'm going to give you guys a formula. I'm going to drop this nugget. Okay. So anyone that's listening, give us some hearts right now. So I'm going to give you the formula of how you go from five guys to 30 guys in lightning speed. Cause you guys just can't figure it out. How do I know you can't figure it out? Cause I get calls every day. That's how. And how do I know you can't figure it out? Because I've heard it a million times at Sword Ventures Group, and I'm hearing it a million times at Skydance. You have to stay consistent, okay? You have to place the ads. You have to fill a room, and not with hired and trained roofing and restoration guys. You have to fill that room with 19 to 30-year-old kids. These kids are selling pizzas, burgers, flipping pizzas. I don't care what they're doing. You have to be an influencer. You have to meet them at the gym. You have to meet them at the Blue Martin. You have to meet them somewhere. I don't care where you meet them, but that room needs to be filled every Thursday. When that room's filled every Thursday, you come in like a freight train. You come in like the Wolf of Wall Street. Say, listen, guys, you're in this market. You're selling pizzas. You're selling burgers. You know, this is your opportunity to make a career for a lifetime. I'll teach you how to make 250 k Just do what I say. And then what I do is I say, listen, I don't know if I'm going to hire you. I bring him in on a one-on-one and say, listen, you tell me why you should work for me. I already have an organization. I already have a team. Why should I give you a guy who's been selling burgers and flipping, you know, bagging, bagging groceries an opportunity to rock a watch and, and make 250 k And then they sell me. I say, listen, <clears throat> here's the deal. I'm not going to hire you today. But if I like you, I'm going to discuss this with my team. I'm going to see if you think you're a good fit with our culture because that's important to us. If I like you, I'm going to bring you back on Friday. I'm going to put you through five hours of training. I'll buy you pizza. No big deal. <laughs> with five hours of training, you're going to watch every door knocking video, every square test. You're going to learn everything, okay? And then if you pass that, I'm going to bring you out on a blitz on Saturday with our whole team. And what I do is, guys, this is the nugget. I take those guys and I peer them with seniors that are lazy, that don't want to knock doors anymore because those green beans are pushing them. Now the seniors sitting in the truck, the green beans are out there knocking the doors. When you see a spark of interest, that senior needs to get out of the truck and say, hey, man, I'm sorry, Billy. You know, I was, I was actually finalizing paperwork for Janice down the street. She just actually is going to get a new roof. So he was knocking on your door just to let you know there's going to be some construction trucks in the area. By the way, did you have a chance to have a roof and property inspection? And when she says no, and they do the roof and property inspection, what needs to happen is they need to sign that contract. That contract needs to go to the senior, and that junior needs $100 cash that day. If you do not give him cash that day, you never will see him again. And then what happens is on Monday, that guy that was bagging pizza selling burgers is calling Johnny saying, hey, the hammer says I got to get out there and knock some doors. I need some money in my pocket today. And once they do five, then they graduate to a senior rep. And so that's how we do it. But if you stop hiring, you're not growing. Mm -hmm, if, right. you, if you say there's no one out there and not swinging, you know, if you don't swing the bat, you never have a chance to hit. So you need to swing the bat as many times as possible because you never know who's the next million dollar producer. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I can Boom. agree. And definitely down there in the storm market areas. You know, for our area up here, we don't get many storms. We're in PA. We get high winds in the area. I think the last hailstorm that we got was maybe five, six, seven years ago up in Reading, PA. Uh -huh. um, a couple of southern, you know, state roofing contractors came up. Um, but, I mean, for the most part, we, we stick with retail. You know, retail, new construction, light commercial, things like that. But I like that. And, and I want to go back to what you said when a storm hit down in, uh, what was it, Charlotte? You know, so the, Charlotte, the storm, the, there was tornadoes that came through. Yeah, it was all yeah, wind. Yeah. So that tornado, you talked about things that I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about, like the reality of like selling too many jobs. 
and, and can't get them built in time. Like that horror story or that the yeah, reality, the, the struggle, right? Like the struggle was real. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yes, it's great. There's a storm. Let's all go down there. That's fine. But then once you land all this work, then what the hell are you going to do about it? Right. And how do you keep the salespeople that believed in you right. and are like, man, I, this is my family's house, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, I, this, this is my family's house. You know, I need to get this thing built. And a lot of those soldiers yep. guys was their families. And if they, if they don't believe in it, how many more doors do you think they're going to knock for you? Right. Right. So yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you have to be with the right organization. Right. That has enough labor to handle that workload. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. And that's what kind of scares me about having thirty guys sitting in the room on Thursday. If they're out knocking doors and you don't have the labor to keep up with that stuff, so there's there's a balance there, man. No, but here's the thing: being in the network, okay. And I'm gonna give, I'm gonna drop a, I'm gonna drop a plug for him, Dougie Wilkins. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, w, uh, WWR uh, Restoration. I don't know if you know who he is. He was on the stage with me this year, subcontractor of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. this guy this is the first time ever a subcontractor ever got to be on the stage and got a reward, but he deserved it. He's doing eighty million. Okay, by me putting him on the card, he now has business coming in from everywhere. Nice. So the thing is, if you're a big company. It's your responsibility to focus on the subcontractors, the labors, oh, yeah. to make sure. And make sure you can cover that balance. But, dude, who cares? You create a revenue problem first. Right. So you don't ever hold yourself back from hiring guys. Because right. your top guy can fall off tomorrow. And with, with the retail deal, and, and Lee's teaching me this, and that's why I love Lee, by the way. Lee, you're awesome. I want to tell you that. One of the hardest working guys I ever met. I have mad respect for you. But Lee's keep talking about the good league 8% financing. That's, changing, mm -hmm. that's going to change the game. Oh, yeah. I agree. You know, that, that, that right there is going to change the whole game yeah. altogether. If you're not offering finance by now, then you're already behind the curve, man. For sure. Well, guess what? Oh, yeah. Probably 75% are behind the curve. Right, man. Other than some guys are starting to pick up solar now, which gives that finance an option. But, you know, you really, and, and, and this is coming out of Lee's mouth, not mine, because he's keep teaching me. You really want to be, because I was all storm, 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 but you really want to be a hybrid. Mm -hmm. you got to be a hybrid. And if you're not a hybrid, you know, you're almost a red box blockbuster. You, you're going to die. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, and your guys will be stronger. And, and that's one of the things, too, that Lee uh, has a lot of training in is on the retail side. And that's mm -hmm. what I want to learn, too. The retail side is, is, is really the real sale because you can't depend on some, even though I'll tell you guys, you know, this came from Big Brother. You know, I don't know, but it's going to be a big storm here. <laughs> There's going to be some big storms this year. And so, you know, you know, Jake, Jacob's going to have a lot of work and he's traveling the country. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. These type of relationships and these connections, it's not, and this is Anthony's deal. I'll give him a little credit for this one. One plus one is not two. One plus one is 99, 99, 99. So all of those relationships add up to multiple things that will become the next big thing or, or the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. So when I go out and I go to these events, I talk to everybody, man. I network. You never know who you're going to be like last week, me and Bill are, we're in Vegas with Jay Bloom, the billionaire, and we're looking at doing an NBA team with the Saudi of print, the Saudi prince. I mean, you just never know. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, man, that's good you, you got to go out and you got to network for sure. No matter where you're at. You know, I, I was at a place today, and I actually dropped the ball. Usually, I always have business cards on me. And we're speaking to these people, and I had one of my shirts on. And, of course, we're talking about, do you guys do roofing? Do you replace doors? I'm like, hell yeah. And I'm like this. Well, let me show you something. I'm going to give him a plug. What's up, Charlie Chino? See this One Tap Connect right here? Yeah. Let me show you guys this. If you don't have One Tap Connect... You're behind the eight ball again because exactly what happened to you mm -hmm. will happen again. And so one tap connect yep. with Charlie Chino yep. is the new technology. And literally, I love it too. I just go feel I slap their phone and boom, all of my information's on there. All my Facebook information, and this is how I sell too, all my Facebook information's on there, all my galleries on there. So they literally can see every single thing about me before even our next call. So it's not the old days of a phone number, okay? Yep. It's literally who are you, what's your gallery, everything you've done, and that's what you want them to see. Right. And especially if you have door knockers, so Charlie, I hope you appreciate that. I didn't mean to plug you, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's the new, if you're not, if you're not, 
changing in technology and evolving in technology mm -hmm. and also evolving, like I said, into a hybrid and you're not fighting all the newest things like the good lift thing, like the solar thing, yep. you will fall behind. Absolutely. You'll yeah. get left behind, bro. There's no doubt yeah. about it. You got to keep So what is your guys' biggest, let me ask this. What's your guys' biggest challenge with the storms? Our biggest challenge with the storms? Yeah. We don't have it. The storms themselves. <laughs> yeah, we don't have but it. But you, you don't want to go chase them, huh? It's not um, worth it. Not that we're not there. We're actually trying to put ourselves in a position where we can catch storms. We already want to be there. We already want to have boots on the ground. Storm, it's going to rain. That's right. That's right. Do a little rain dance. <laughs> you know? But no, we opened up a place down along what's called the Del Marva. <clears throat> which is in between okay. Delaware, Virginia, and Maryland. So down there, there usually comes one or two good storms in the beginning, one in the beginning of the season, one at the end of the season. So with us having a brick and mortar there, we'll be there already along with the Oh, new so you guys are in Maryland. Oh, yeah. So oh, you remember yeah. that kid I just told you about? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I was gonna Kyle Dotson. Yeah, I was going to ask. I got to bring this I, kid. I wanna, I'm going to bring him on. Yeah. This kid is 22 years old. Yeah. I talk to him daily. He's got 26 reps. Nice. The kid's going to do 30 million. And let me show you something. I mean, I don't want to see if I have the video. I show you the video. Um, but literally the kid's standing on the chair screaming, thank you, Hammer, we love you. Nice. And that's the energy, guys. It's not the old energy. No. It's the new young energy that's going to yeah. attract the young energy. Yeah. So if it's not you that's going to be the, the motivator or the hammer, I'll call it, right? You need to find that young energy kid that's an influencer. Another plug is, uh, you know, Chris and Chris Construction. Yeah. And he has a son, which is Cody Ranlat. Yep. Uh, I love Chris and Chris. But yep. Cody Ranlett was a younger generation kid who now is rebuilding or or, 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 or or adding fuel on the fire on his dad's thing because his Instagram shows yep. a lifestyle that you don't see. You know, kids that age don't get to – when I was young, kids my age didn't live like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, didn't, they didn't get to live like that, you know. Right. But, you know, Cody and Chris – or uh, Chris and Cody, they're really good friends of mine. They have a great father-son relationship. But Cody brought the dynamic. They actually are, are in Lee's program. Yep. Lee took him to a next level. But, but Cody brought him to that dynamic because he's a young influencer. And yep. if you don't find that young influencer – and that's kind of what happened with CMR, too, if you guys want to know. We found young guys that were 19 years old. And now their team leads the TMR, but you gotta find that kid with that vibe, that energy, that that that, that make sure he's an influencer, make sure he's he knows everybody, you know. That Kyle's got a golden nugget, but I'm gonna have to connect you with him. I can't tell you what he does, but he does something absolutely amazing mm -hmm. when he does interviews. And he gets a lot of leads, I'll just tell you that. Nice. So he does something awesome. Yeah. You can kind of put the dots together. I don't want to say what he does. Yeah. But I this did, kid is 22 years that. old. I brought him as a platinum sponsor. Mm -hmm. So he trusted me. He spent 50 grand. Uh, he came to win the storm. He had the best time of his life. He paid for elite passes for all of his guys. All under these guys were uh, 19 mm -hmm. to 22. And they're all millionaires in the town you're trying to work in. And they're crushing it. So the opportunity is there. You just got to find that young energy yeah. to rebirth it, to bring it alive again. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my opinion. Now, you know? what part of Maryland is he in? He lives right. You can literally from the penthouse, you can see, you can see the Pentagon from his house. Okay. All right. So right outside Virginia. So yeah. Southern, Southern Maryland, Northern Virginia area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But gotcha. you know, the weird thing is about him and his dad's a very powerful figure. I can't say much, but he doesn't have any social media. So we're working out him with that because he needs really people really need to know about him. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of a hidden gem, but his energy is kind of similar to my energy. See how we're fucking, we're maniacs kind of, you know, that's when you walk into a recruiting room, people don't want to say, hi guys, you know, please introduce yourself. I come in like a train, dude. Like, what's up guys? What's going on? Right. Boom, boom, boom. How are you doing? Introduce yourself. Where are you from? And the confidence level, and I have the confidence, and I'm grateful for being on, having, being on SVG, being in the field, stealing teams, and I think that's important, too. We talked about that before the podcast. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys I'm bringing over to Sky Diamonds are roofers, you know. Right. They've already sold roofs. Mm -hmm. They've knocked doors. So when I put them on the phone with owners, they know how it feels. Right. They know what they want. And if you haven't knocked the door and you haven't been on a roof, who are you to tell anybody what to do? Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Right on, man. That's Roofing what, Bill's and, character, awesome. man. Yeah. And what's the name of his company? Affordable Home Restoration. 
<laughs> yeah, he's okay. affordable home restoration. His name's okay. Kyle Dotson. Right on. And I, I'll make the connection with you. Yeah. Uh, but the kids absolutely make You know what? You guys, um, here's the deal, man. A couple of different things. For one, I'm hoping you guys are going to come to the American Dream Conference uh, with the Blue Car Blue Car American Dream. Uh, it's going to be May 27th and May 29th at the Diplomat uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Are you guys coming? Very possible. Very no, possible. you guys got to come. Listen, if, <laughs> Lee, listen, if, Lee, if Lee comes on behind the tool belt, then I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right? get Lee there. No way. There and then go, the Lee. other thing is right? we are all meeting in Dallas, so Kyle will be there. We're going to Rainmaker, uh, Dallas, twenty the 25th, for Rainmaker for Bill Walsh. Because everyone that gets in his program, we all go, we meet together. Nice. And it's called Rainmaker, but Kyle's going to be there too. Mm -hmm. But I will connect you with Kyle because, listen, here's the deal, man. It's the same thing as if one guy can run a mile, at, when the one guy breaks the mile record, mm -hmm. the other guy does, right? Right. So my firm belief is if one man can, so can the other. Yep. So if there's already a king in your market doing it, mm -hmm. then you should be doing it. Yeah, if yeah. you're in the same market as us in Florida and Texas, and you're not doing 150 yeah. million, you got to ask yourself why not. Well, I'm just curious on how we've never heard of him, you know, because yeah. we actually do work in five soon to be six states, and we we do about 90 builds a week. Hold on one second, let me see. I'm just you, curious. You never, you never heard of I him. I think it's said? impressive that he's got to that level without having a social media presence too, yeah, man. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's a that's a key point. Well, there. we're gonna we're gonna bring him on a podcast. Yeah, I want to meet this kid, man. A lot of people want to meet him. But, you know, you, let me tell you something. It took a lot of trust with him and me. <clears throat> it took a lot of trust with him and me to get him to trust me to come to the conference. Does that make sense? Watch. Oh, yeah. Here it goes. Let's see. Here's the energy the kid has. On the side of three, everyone thank affordable homes and SVG for making this happen. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> nice. He is young, too, man. He is young. The kid's a maniac. He's a maniac, dude. And when I met him at the conference, he's even crazier. He's awesome. He's a great kid. He's right a great stuff, kid. He's going to be stuff. one of the biggest up-and-comers. Uh, Lee's actually going to have him on a podcast. Cool. But I need you guys to commit, man. You got to come to the to the conference okay. or the event. Lee's fighting. Uh, Lee's supposed to be fighting Del Medico. I don't know if he's going to take the fight or not. <laughs> it's going to be very, very interesting. We'll see. Yeah. But other than that, we have Ed Molette, Jocko, um, a lot of good things. And, and, and you know, that's the thing, guys. Mm -hmm. The same thing we did here is what happens at the conferences or the events. Mm -hmm. yep. you, you, new stars are made. New oh, yeah. relationships are made, and then the, the the network just gets bigger and bigger. And if you're not going to the events, then you're 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 really missing the boat because you don't know who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's your next partnership partnership is. You don't know the next relationship. You're stuck in your little hole, and you're not coming out, and nothing's changing. So um, that's funny. Me and Lee are on the same page. There's a guy. <clears throat> um, I'm sure you've heard of him, and this is kind of what my revelation was. Hopefully I'm not talking too much, but Dr. Joe DePenza, okay? <laughs> Another guy, Dr. Joe DePenza, he talks about programming. And if you wake up in the morning on the same side of the bed and you drink the same cup of coffee and you go do the same old thing, check your email, but you expect change is the definition of insanity because nothing's going to change. If you want massive change, you need to take massive action, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I did. Uh, when I went through the injury, when I got shot, I didn't do anything the same. I was going to the gym at weird hours. I was switching up everything because I wanted to follow that because I knew I wanted to change. I wanted to different. So I wasn't going to fall back into the same, the same program and the same with hiring, training, and recruiting. If you've been doing the same thing for years and now you're not getting the results, mm -hmm. why do you think you can still do the same thing and get the same result? Exactly. You need to change it's it true. up. That's true. That's true, man. Very true. true. Makes sense? Yeah. It makes, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect awesome, sense. Awesome, guys. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Good stuff, man. Yeah. I, I really I really like the uh, the direction that the industry is going, man. And I, I like the things that you stand for and, and how the direction that you're that you're trying to go yourself. You know, trying to help people, try to be a motiv motivational speaker and, and really push people up, build them up. Um, that's something that, that our industry is, is – getting a lot better at and wasn't there, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you weren't able to, yeah. you know, hit up somebody that's very successful and say, Hey, how do you do it? What's the, what's the, well, I'll tell you another great leader to watch Kurt Linnington. 
Lanier Roofing. Mm-hmm. Wow, he's an amazing leader. You know, I watch him, I follow him, but he's following that platform. Mm-hmm. You know, he's creating great leadership. Okay. Mm-hmm. One of the things that teach uh, Lee taught me is uh, what is it called? A uh, decentralized command. So yep. you need to allow That's the other person. Right there, man. Yep. Say it again. That's a Jocko tactic right there, man. Well, whatever. He, he yeah. talks about it. It's yep. a decentralized command. And it's a lot hard. It's hard for owners because, and this is something I learned from Lee in his book, and the, Don, Donnie hate, you know, fishing with dynamite makes sense, right? If you're an owner and you're chained to the business, you're not an owner, you're an employee. But if you learn how to decentralize command and you, you know that the guy's going to fail, even though he's doing it 80% of what you can do because you can do it better, right? you got to let him fail. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he'll never learn. He'll never succeed. Right. And so that's what Lee's kind of doing. He's learning. He's, he's teaching me to learn that and teach other guys to decentralize command because guys just want to hold on to it. Yep. But the yeah. more you hold on to it, the more you keep the chains chained to you feel. So, yeah. yes, you're holding on to your business, but look at my arms. You're also chained. Yeah. So you're not free. You're not free. You're not You're not acting free. You're not working with free will. You're, oh, you're, you're not growing. You're dying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, it's it's basically allowing your your junior leaders that you're trying to breed because a good leader breeds junior leaders, and uh, the decentralized commands allows these guys to build up the confidence to make the decisions, you know. and, yeah, and part, absolutely. part of that and is to make the wrong decisions sometimes, you know. And you, you know what? If you that. don't empower somebody, they'll never grow. Right. And right. you'll never know they're a leader unless you give them a chance and empower them. How do you empower them? You know, a lot of guys are telling me, oh, this guy's got too much money, too much in his book. He doesn't want to go on door knock no more. Screw him. He has to go on door knock. What are you talking about? I'm pairing him with two juniors, and he's going to go do it. Mm -hmm. Or he can't be part of our organization. He's not part of our culture. That is more entitlement and selfishness, and he doesn't care about my business. He cares about his book of business. And if you're going to go with that culture, then guess who's going to follow that culture? All the new guys are going to follow that culture, and you're going to do the same thing thing over. You got to hold people accountable, KPIs. You got to hold them accountable to meetings. They got to be in the meetings. I mean, that's the most annoying thing. If a guy's not in the meeting, like you're not, why are you not in the meeting, dude? Right. What makes you special? Because you got a book of business, but you, but I'm also helping you by getting you to that opportunity. But you should be training these new guys because we always want to grow. Because the more the company grows. The more the brand grows, the easier it is for you to make a sale too, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's good very stuff. True, How many sales guys do you have? Uh, I saw you guys got a ton. No, no, no we don't have many. No, no. We're, we're bigger in the new construction, man. You know, yeah. we're, we're, if I, I don't know what the percentages is, man, but we're, we're starting yeah. to get bigger into the retail, but we predominantly went new construction yeah. Take hold of the, the labor force mm-hmm. um, because, you know, with, with us doing so many new construction roofs, you know, between 80 and 120 roofs a week in new construction. Um, right now, when I heard the margins are low, I talked to Eric Armstrong. He does the same thing. Yeah. You know, but, but listen, where you guys need, and if I can give you advice, I talked to Eric, you guys need to compound, do it all. You have new construction here. Mm-hmm. So yep. you have the reputation and you can say, hey, and I'm just, I don't mean to coach you, but you can say, hey, man, we're a company that does 80 roofs a week. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily new construction, but when your doors, guys knocking at the door saying, hey, we do 80 roofs a week, that storm, that that that, that retail guy is going to go, wow, this is the company I want to do this. With. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. And we, we kind of use that technique. Yeah, that's the step yeah. stone that we're starting to, that yeah. we're actually starting it's to been, hit right Yeah, now, it's man. been our vehicle to get us where we're going and, and where we want to be. Yeah. You know, for sure. I, uh, Ty, if you agree with me, man, I think, you know, the, the, the horrible timing, and I don't want to say horrible timing, but we hired our sales manager two weeks before they shut PA down for COVID. So, like, she quit her, her, her medical job. She was selling oxygen mm-hmm. and stuff, um, you know, working in the medical field, um, came to work for us, and two weeks later, whole, whole freaking state shut down. So, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, my God, I just made this, this crazy career change. You know, she was... She was great at what she did, and mm-hmm. she's like, you know what? I just, I just need a change. Came here. Well, to be you, like, you guys weren't essential, or no? Yeah, we were. Yes, yes. yes. So, so that's what I'm saying. Listen, guys, you can either look at the glass of water half full or half empty. If she was as great as you say she was, she would have been out there knocking she's doors. Still as currently as is. Yeah. Yep, she still oh. currently is. So she, she's still our yeah. sales manager. She's running a team of people now, and mm-hmm. um, you know, when when COVID hit, man, we we went all in. Yeah. You know what I mean? We what can I, down what is your guys' training policy now? How are you training them? How are we training them? Um, yeah, are you just throwing them in a truck and knocking doors, or no. do you have a set curriculum? Yeah, we do. And it's, it's okay. getting better every day. I mean, we tried to SVG for a minute, 
Okay. Um, but the, the training processes that we have in place through, you know, certainty and GAF shingles, we kind of use that to, to get them to learn the products first before we go out there so they can speak intelligently because we're all mm-hmm. about educating the homeowner. <clears throat> Anyone can Not sell you. anything. Like, I get that. You know what I mean? You can get a used car sales guy in here to, to go out and sell shingles. I get that, but our we where we focus is education. Educate yeah. our salespeople mm-hmm. and then educate the homeowner. Yeah. Why do you need a new roof? Yeah. You know, that's, that's awesome. Lazy, you know? And you know, guys, that that's a lot of what I'm learning from Lee. His uh his platform's a lot more educational in that in that sense. Yeah. Very, very detailed. Um from from the you know, from putting on the roof, all of that stuff. And I think that's the right decision. But guys, I'm excited. I think uh, this year is going to be a huge yeah, year. We do too. I would definitely love to see you guys at, at the um, event in hey, Fort Lauderdale. It's going to be fun, dude. Hey, it's we'll be out. there, but only one stipulation, bro. All right. There's, there's plenty of Wednesday nights between here and May. True story. All right. That's the, that's the only one. I'll, I'll make it happen, guys. I'll make it happen. We'll do the best that we can. And, uh-huh. and then I'd love to show you guys the platform to, to really get your guys trained up because it's all retail. Right um, right. Other than that, guys, it's been an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, I thank you. And, and, and any other things you got for me? Yeah. Um, I don't think so, man. I'm fir- first of all, I want to shout out um, our sponsor. We didn't get time to run the commercial today. Um, I didn't want to cut you off or anything. Can I yeah, take up had, all the time? Flow. We, no, it's great. Honestly, it's yeah, great. It was the good. show is about you, man. Yeah. Um, but we want to thank our sponsor, Lead Scout, um, for for uh, making this this happen. We want to thank the Hammer for hopping on here and, um, with with low notice here. Um, yes. We appreciate you, man. Well, they wanted to leave, but they took me second. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> <laughs> we would never do that. <laughs> Make it happen, Hammer. Make it happen. Get Lee up on here. That's right. That's right. Cool. But, but, yeah, thank you guys, everyone, for watching, man. It's It was a great episode. There's lots of information here. Yes. If any of you contractors out there are interested in more of what Mike does, check out Sky Diamonds University. Hit him up in his DMs. Yes. Um, there's plenty of stuff that he can offer you. He's got a great story. Everyone yeah, loves does. a comeback story. Everyone that's sitting in this studio right now, has a great comeback story, man. It, it builds character. I wouldn't change any of my dumb shit I did in my life nope. or anything. I wouldn't change one minute, one, one, right. any of it. So, and I Never think all does. of us will agree on that. So, yeah. um, I appreciate you, Mike. Thanks for coming on today. Um, if anyone has not already, make sure you guys share this out. Um, hop on Storm Venture, or I mean, not Storm Venture, Sky Diamonds. Uh, Facebook page. Well, Storm Ventures like, Group, we're all friends, Storm by Ventures the way. Too. Yeah, we hop all, on there. Well, we're all friends. Um, it's all good, guys. We got right. all. We all got to help each other. Right yeah. on, man. Appreciate everyone watching. We'll see you guys all next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for another episode, episode 117 of Behind the Tool Belt with TC Backer Construction. Everyone have a great night. Right on. Yeah.